Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to paint clouds three different ways. So if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So I hope you enjoy. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using three stretched and primed eight inch by eight inch canvases you could certainly be using any substrate that you want. This is just an exercise, um, a study of sorts. You could be working on mixed media paper or canvas panels, whatever works for you. Um, I'm gonna, this is what I'll be using, but you can use, certainly use whatever you'd like. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, uh, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, and fire red. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like to. For my tools today, I have several brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch mop brush, synthetic mop brush. I have three flat bristle brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide, a half inch wide, and a quarter inch wide. So these are all flat bristle brushes. And then I have a large and a small blender brushes. So these are a mix of natural bristles and they have a rounded head on them similar to a filbert, only the bristles are shorter. So those are the brushes I'll be using. You can of course use anything that works for you. If you're painting along with me, I'm, I'm gonna be, or you're probably gonna want a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a couple of additional resources that could help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint brushes that I'm using and there's also the resource for the paint there as well. Uh, and then I will also be providing a link where you can download a free image of my final paintings. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through your painting process. And that's all, all we're going to need today. So what I'm going to be doing for to start these, I'm going to be showing you how to paint clouds three different ways. So I'm going to be showing you a representation of day clouds in a nice sunny day. I'll be also doing clouds in a sunset type of atmosphere and then I'm going to be doing some night clouds. So what I first need to do is just paint my sky because the sky is behind the clouds. So I want to make sure I have my sky first. So I'm going to start my sky. I'm going to do my day sky with ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, and white. And then I'm gonna use cobalt blue, white, red, yellow for my sunset sky. And then I'm gonna be making a dark blue for my night sky. So I'm gonna start with my day sky. And I'm gonna, I've got my large bristle brush. I'm also gonna be using my mop on this, uh, on this step also. Once I apply the paint for my background, I will switch to my mop brush to just lightly blend it in a bit. The bristle brush will provide me a quick way to apply the paint so it doesn't dry, and then the mop brush will help to smooth it, soften it out. So I'm gonna start with my ultramarine blue at the top of my sky. Probably could have separated these canvases a little bit more. Um, then I'm gonna, without washing my brush, go into my cobalt blue. So this will provide me a really nice um, transition down the sky. Then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white on my dirty brush and start this, um, this blend. And then I'm just gonna keep picking up white as I go down my sky. So what this is doing is it's providing me with a nice natural gradient in my sky. So when I'm looking up at the sky, I typically uh, tend to notice that it is uh, darker at the top and as it gets closer to the earth it gets a little bit lighter. So once I've got that I can use my my mop brush and just kind of lightly go back and forth. You could even go diagonal if you needed this blend to um, work its way into each other a little bit more. I've got light pressure and this really just softens out the paint allows for it to be nice and blended and you can go back and forth as many times as you want and that's gonna be the way that I start my day sky. So my 
um, sunset sky or sunrise sky, whatever you want to, uh, whatever way that you want to look at it, is going to be um, blue at the top, cobalt blue at the top, and then I'm going to fade it down to my lighter white, and then I'll put a little bit of sunset colors down towards the horizon, which will be with my red yellow and white and again I'm, I'm not going for anything super fancy here this is just something that I can have for a background behind my um, behind my my clouds so I'm going to start with a little bit of cobalt blue and white I washed my brush this is my bristle brush I don't necessarily want this one as dark as this one at the top but you could really get it to do whatever you want you could mimic it after whatever sunset sky that you want. I feel I have too much blue on my brush right now, so I'm going to actually wash my brush. While that paint is still wet, I'm going to pick up a little bit more white. There we go. And I'm going to blend it in, something like that. And then as I come down, I'm just going to make sure that's blended. There we go. As I come down my sky, I'm going to start um, I'm going to bring white most of the way down, and it's okay if it's still a little, you still have a little bit of blue. You just don't want too much blue on your brush as you're coming down this sky uh, before you go into the sunset colors because you might end up with a big green sky. So now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of red, just an itty bitty bit. So this is going to start like a pinkish tone on my sunset sunsetted atmospheric sky. Now I can pick up a tiny bit of yellow. Just an itty bitty bit and a touch of white. So yellow and a touch of white down at the bottom. And again, nothing really dramatic here. I just want to give the impression that there is in fact a sunset. So this will help dictate what, what I do to those clouds um, that are going to be forming in the sky. So that's going to be that one. Now, and I don't really need, if you felt you wanted to use the mop brush to soften this out, you certainly could, but mine seems to be soft enough, so no need for my mop brush on this step, or on this one. So now I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush. I'm going to create a dark blue for this sky over here. So washing and drying my brush. I'm going to use a little bit of my... Um, I think I'm going to go with my ultramarine blue and a touch of black and a touch of white. So I'm in essence kind of desaturating my dark blue or my um, ultramarine blue and adding by adding gray to it. But I wanted it a little bit darker than my ultramarine blue. So that's why I'm adding black to it. So I could just add white to it. That'll make it softer looking, but I wanted it kind of like a midnight navy blue type of a color. So that's where I'm headed with this. So this is about the shade I'm going. It's going to look lighter on my canvas initially because of the white background. I might end up doing two coats, but I'm going to start with this first. I might pull out my blender as well. I'm going to have it a little bit lighter at the top because I want to imply that there's a moon up there. So for me, this one, I'm going to just start at the bottom and I'm just going to put, I, next time I do one of these, I got to separate these canvases a little bit more so I don't bump into one another. Um, so I'm just putting my dark blue down on the bottom and then I'm going to pick that back up, pick up more dark blue. And then when I go to do the top of it, I'll add a little bit of white to my brush and that'll get my sky to go a little bit lighter at the top. Probably definitely going to need to use my blender on here so I can get rid of some of this streakiness, which is, or the, um, the mop brush, I should say. Now I'm going to pick up white plus my dark blue, get it to go just a little bit lighter up at the top. Again, I just want to imply that maybe there's a moon as my light source. So once I've got that, I definitely feel like I want to use my mop brush to um, soften this. There we go. Let me just get this like this. And then once I've got all of my skies done, what I'm going to do is I will blow dry my canvases. So that's good in through there. And I can take my mop brush and you can either do this kind of in a circular type of way, or you could just kind of lightly go back and forth. So whatever, whatever works for you, I think back and forth is going to just 
get me I have my this canvas over here that to contend with but so that's going to be how I start these skies again you could get them to go lighter or darker whatever works for you but once you've got them done um, what I'm going to do is I am going to dry my canvases because I want um, the, I want them to be dry before I start my cloud formations so I am going to just put these brushes away and then I am going to get out my blow dryer so I'm gonna fast forward through the blow drying process for you <laughs> All right, oh, excuse me. All right, so now that my canvases are dry, I am going to make sure I um, finish any little unfinished parts of the sky and start to lay in where I want all of my clouds to go. So I am going to be using my larger bristle brush for this step. Um, and I wanted to make note and point out as I was in the drying process, I don't know if you guys watch my hand doing this. Well, this is me touching my canvas to see if it's dry. Well, I had a spot that wasn't dry here and here. So I lifted the paint right off the canvas with my, with my hand. Those are going to make for great spots for clouds. <laughs> so just, uh, you know, as you go through your painting process, if stuff like that happens, just roll with it. Let, let happen what's going to happen. And, um, it's all part of the fun painting process. So I think I am going to hit um, this one and this one with a kind of a second pass for the skies and then I'm going to lay, start laying in the, um, the clouds. So on this one I'm going to go back to my cobalt blue and my ultramarine blue with a tiny bit of white paint on my brush. I like this up here but I feel like I want it a little bit softer so I just wanted to add just a little bit more um, depth to that sky up top so I'm picking up a little bit of my cobalt blue ultramarine blue and just again just a touch of white paint on my brush so this is going to provide me with an even smoother um, look to it a little bit more atmospheric dimension in it um, and as I come down I can pick up a tiny bit of white maybe with a little bit of the cobalt blue just to again get it as atmospheric and as soft as I want it before I start adding my clouds on top of it. I also feel that in day skies a lot of times I see um, a little bit of warmth down at the bottom of the sky as it's meeting the earth. That's why I chose to use um, cobalt blue down at with down towards the bottom portion of the sky. So to me that represents a natural sky a little bit more. So that looks pretty good to me for that for that go around. This one again I'm, I'm pretty happy with. Maybe just a little bit more blending in through here. Um, and then this one over here I definitely want another layer on here. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of white with that dark blue. I actually have to make some additional dark blue. So let me do that while I am um, before I uh, finish that part of the sky because I won't have enough here. And just again making more of my dark blue on the fly here. So as you're going through your process again know that this is just an exercise so as you're as you're doing it if you if you run out of blue like I did it's okay if the next time you make it it's not the exact same shade of blue some use the same color recipe or the best that you can and get it as close as you can and that'll that'll work so I have white plus my dark blue on my brush so I can just get another layer on here it just wasn't um, smooth enough for me so I knew that I wanted uh, to smooth it out a little bit more and then as I come down I'm just going to pick up that dark blue and that'll give me a nice beautiful night sky and then as this is drying it's okay if when you go to lay the clouds in if this is going to be still wet so I planned for that because <laughs> I knew that on this dark sky I'm going to be using my dark blue anyways to start my clouds so putting um, this layer to smooth out the sky is going to work out just fine for me with the process of making these night clouds. So that looks pretty good. While that's kind of settling a little bit, I'm going to go to my sunset sky and lay those in. So I'm going to wash my brush. On my sunset sky, 
I think the biggest um, important thing for me to explain on clouds is there are a f there's so many different types of clouds out there that that I'm not a a weather person and I don't understand what they all the different kinds are but I do know that they get affected by your light source by the wind by the type of cloud that they are so I'm gonna teach you how to make just kind of like light airy type of clouds fluffy airy type of clouds that are affected by the light source so for me on this particular one there my light source is my sun so if I have a setting sun, the bottom of my clouds is going to be the lightest. And the clouds will also take on the colors of the sunset. So I can have orange, red, yellow, purple clouds because they take on the color of the sky too. They'll be lighter as they get towards your, um, towards your light source. So what I'm going to start for these clouds is I'm actually going to be using a little bit of my cobalt blue, brown, and white. Just a very little bit on my brush. I'm using all three of those colors on my brush at the same time, just to kind of lay in where I want these clouds to go. So I'm gonna have um, some up and through here. I'm gonna just use a circular type of brush stroke that's gonna give me this airiness to them. You can have them in where, whatever area that you want. I'm gonna have a couple kind of floating up in through here. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more blue with my brush to just get some of these with a little bit more of bluer tones in them. And then as I come down the sky, I'm gonna start picking up white plus a tiny bit of red. So white with a little bit of red. And you can even overlap what you've already done. And just remember that this is the first layer of these clouds. So white with a tiny bit of red on my brush. As they get closer to the, to the horizon, they're most likely going to look smaller because they will be farther away from the viewer. So based on where a viewer normally, it's, normally is seeing clouds from, they will look smaller as they get down towards that horizon line. I'm actually gonna pick up a tiny bit of blue, red, and white. So this is gonna be like a little kind of purpley type of look. So I'm just gonna make them a little bit smaller as they get down towards that horizon. And big and fluffy up here because that's closest to the viewer. So that'll, that'll help you understand how to kind of make them um, bigger and smaller. And I'll do that same idea when I go to the other ones as well. So that looks pretty good for the formation on those ones. Over on this guy, I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna have these ones more kind of grayish. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna be using uh, black, white, and ultramarine blue. So a tiny bit of all three colors, black, white, and ultramarine blue. Just a itty bitty bit on my brush. I can't stress how itty bitty bit of a bit I'm using. <laughs> and again, bigger at the top. So I've got my three colors, maybe a little bit more white in through there. My three colors on my brush. I'm gonna get these soft, fluffy edges up and through here. I'm diffusing my edges. So what that means is I'm not having heavy paint at those edges. I'm allowing for them to look organic. I'm allowing for maybe just a rogue kind of cloud to drift by where it doesn't look like it necessarily belongs. And I'm allowing for the carefreeness of my brush, this type of bristle brush to guide me through um, making these clouds that are organic. Um, so again, tiny bit of black, tiny bit of ultramarine blue, and a little bit of white is gonna lay down my base coat. And as I'm getting closer to the bottom of my canvas, I'm gonna make them smaller and smaller. So I'm just moving my brush in a smaller area. So that'll get them to look like they are smaller bits of clouds going down towards that horizon. On this guy over here, I'm gonna wash my brush because I have a lot of white on it. And I'm gonna be using um, quite a bit of 
black <laughs> and a little bit of cobalt blue and white. So these are night clouds. So the back, the, my light source is up above, the side towards the viewer is the dark side. So I can use black and then as my kind of my base coat and then we're gonna put a little bit of lightness around the edges of them. So I'm picking up some black and I, I know I'm gonna have maybe a big one in through here. So I've got some darkness in through here. Maybe I'll have kind of a fluffier one up in through here. And they're gonna get lighter towards the light source, which is up above. But I'm just gonna put some black down first and then I'll build um, my a, a little bit of lightness. So again, I'm okay if my, my blue underneath is still wet because it's just blending into my black and that's totally fine. And again, I'm making them smaller and smaller as they come down towards that horizon line. I feel like I want another one up and through here. And I'm gonna now pick up some, with my black, I'm gonna pick up cobalt blue and a teeny tiny touch of white. Again, teeny tiny touch of white. And this is going to start my lighter edges maybe a little bit more white than that <laughs> and some whites and cobalt blue and start my light there we go my lighter edges of that one so these again are going to be my my night clouds just allowing for these lighter edges to appear something like that and again this is just the first layer so don't feel like you have to have yours in exactly the same spot as mine I just want to start the process of getting them laid on here and then we will finesse them as we go through the painting process so that'll start them Let me just kind of make sure that I've got this the way that I want again just softening some of these edges giving myself organic um, organic type of shapes so there we go, that looks good to me. So now that I've got that in place, now I can wash my brush and, and uh, kind of, oh, I'm not gonna use this brush again. I'm gonna go into my quarter inch bristle. So, or my, excuse me, what do I have? My half inch bristle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from a large bristle down to my smallest one, which I'm not even quite sure I'm gonna be using. I've got my um, large, blender and my small blender and again these are bristle type of brushes only smaller with more control I might not even go into this tiny one I'll go into this one in a little while but I also have my uh, half inch and quarter inch bristle uh, flat bristles so I'm going to progressively get smaller with my brush which will give me more control and be able to um, put um, these the colors in exactly where I want and get some good dimension. So I'll start back with this one. I want, I'm gonna put some red and yellow in these uh, clouds in through here. My light source is down here, so that's where they're gonna take the most color or show the most color. So I'm going in a little bit of red and yellow on my brush and I'm gonna kinda of hit the bottom side of these, um, of these 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 clouds it's like what are these things these clouds down into here I don't need to cover up all that original color that I put in there if I want to I certainly can but this is a part of building um, them into airy type of clouds they can take on those other colors I can also put some of these little reddish and yellow kind of pops in these exterior ones but maybe there maybe I put a little bit more lightness as um, they kind of dissipate out into the atmosphere. So I put a little bit more, um, I put a touch of white on my brush with it. So this is gonna add maybe these little pink hues on these guys up in through here. So knowing that I, I have the ability to maybe, as they're in the, the, up in the sky, maybe they're still kind of daylighty. Um, and then as they're coming down towards this light source, they're taking on the glow of the, um, of the sunset so I can certainly pick up a little bit more white in through there you can even darken some of these so if I wanted to pull in a little bit more red with maybe my ultramarine blue I can put a little bit more of those purpley hues on this on this 
darker side of the um, of the clouds. So this is where I, I'm layering on top of what I've already done, but I'm giving it a little bit more. Um, these clouds are a little bit thinner. Maybe I can even pull out some of these purpley tones in through here. I do want it to all kind of look like it connects. So if I'm using purple up here, which is my red and my blue, I do want to allow for that to translate a little bit in the other clouds as well, if I can. Um, maybe a little bit of the purpley plus a touch of white. So I am going over the brownish areas that I had done, and now I'm just enhancing, I'm adding a little bit more um, color to them. Um, I just picked up a little bit more red and blue to add a little bit more depth in, in this guy over in through here just to give me maybe some fluffy parts in through there. So that looks pretty good. I'm, I don't think I'm gonna need to do um, a whole heck of a lot more to these guys with this brush. Um, and again, I'm just allowing myself to put some, some different type of tones in here. You can even put little ones out in through here, allowing for them to take on those colors of the um, of the sunset, maybe more dramatic down at the bottom, maybe more purpley and bluish up um, towards the top. And again, you can even put a little bit of the, you know, still the day clouds in there as well. Uh, maybe a little bit more white. We're going to pop over here. Okay. So that I think is a good start for that or a good second step for that one. And now on this guy here, again, washing and dry my brush. These ones I really don't need to do a whole heck to, but I don't want to just go white right now. So I'm actually going to pick up a little bit, or I'm going to use a little bit of white plus my, um, mm, I feel like I, I want to use a little bit of that dark blue because it's got black and white in it as well. So white plus my dark blue on my brush. This will give me some nice um, shadowy tones within the cloud. I, again, I don't need it to have a bunch of white in it. I think that's one of the um, misconceptions <laughs> when we first learn how to paint clouds is we want to put them all white. Um, I just picked up a little bit more black because that was a little bit too light for me. Um, so as I'm building my clouds, I'm always thinking that I want depth and dimension in them. So I... Uh, I steer away from using bright white a lot until I'm ready to. So that's looking pretty good for me right now. Now that I've got um, the darker areas on where I want, now I can start building towards white. So I'll pick up a little bit of white plus my, um, plus my dark blue. And now I can start kind of popping in some of these lighter areas. And again, I will definitely do one more pass on this um, in order to get it to have its brightest of its bright. So I, again, I'm not using white all the way yet. You could even use little bits of yellow or tan in your clouds in order to um, allow them to have that, that depth to them, taking on maybe some, um, some additional tones from the atmosphere. Um, but I think when, when learning how to, to paint them, especially just generic kind of ones in the day sky, I would stick to a pretty limited palette um, with maybe white and a couple of tones of, of white, um, be it bluer or grayer or tanner, and that will allow you to uh, understand how you can gradually just build this, this um, fluffiness to them. And then again, white plus my, I'm using white plus the, the dark blue, plus maybe a little bit of gray or whatever is on my palette, whatever dirty white is on my palette right now. And then again, my light source is up top in the sky. So that's where I'm putting a lot of the lightness, but not just on top. I'm finding little pockets in the clouds that might be taking on um, some of that lightness as well, and then down below just these little tiny ones. And again, I will enhance um, those a little bit more in a, in a minute, but I feel like I, I'm digging the way that this looks because it looks like this is the bottom of it, and then I've got some light fluffy stuff up at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush and do the same thing over here. This is where I'm going to be using more of my cobalt blue 
and white as my highlights to these clouds, the night clouds, so cobalt blue and white. The light source is up the moon, so I can take my cobalt blue and my white and start to add these little pops of, um, it might be a little bit too blue. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my dark blue too, because that was a little bit too much for me. White, dark blue, <laughs> and cobalt blue. Don't, don't go too, too light too fast, because you might not like it. There we go. And I can start to um, create almost like the outline of the, the exterior of them. Just allowing myself this, this airiness to them. Something like that. Again, my light source is the moon. So I'm using this um, as my jumping off point saying, I know my moon is to the left. I'm very lightly touching my canvas to give myself these um, little highlighted fluffy parts that are facing the moon. You can have layers of clouds underneath. These ones could, this one could be, you know, is farther away than that one. So that one could, in essence, kind of be um, overlapping this one. But again, use your imagination with clouds. That's, that's another fun part about clouds is <laughs> you get to totally use your imagination. And I'm feeling like um, this brush is getting too big in these bottom areas. So that's when I would naturally start using a different brush. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna put this quarter or this half inch away. Now's the time where I decide whether I wanna go into my quarter inch bristle or start using one of these, um, these, uh, these blenders, which are gonna give me a little bit more control. I think I'm gonna go into my large blender and finish out this guy in through here. So again, my light source is down here. So if I want there to be some real, it's down here, but it's it's on the other side of my clouds. So I can use some yellow and white and give myself some real bright little highlights on some of the edges of these, um, of these clouds. And again, if you feel that this brush um, is too big, you could certainly switch to the smaller version of it. Um, but I'm saying my, my sun is here or somewhere down there, I can add these beautiful brighter highlights to some of these guys right down at the bottom. So that's gonna give, again, the viewer the understanding of where exactly that light source is. And then as I go farther and farther away, now I can start picking up more red and yellow with my, um, with the uh, with the remnants of whatever was on my brush. And as I get farther and farther away, this is where I can fluff them out a little bit. I can even use this scrubbing or scumbling type of technique. I can, as I'm going farther and farther away, I can start picking up my blue and my red. Just be careful if you do have a lot of yellow on your brush to not use yellow and blue because that's gonna make your clouds green. So if you see at all green in your clouds, that means you just need to back off on the yellow and add more blue. You can also use a little bit of water on your brush. That's gonna help you get these nice soft edges to it. Don't forget about the atmosphere. The atmosphere can have just really soft clouds floating by. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my ultramarine blue and red. I wanna get a little bit deeper um, tones in these guys up and through here. And again, you can, I'm just getting mine to kind of have this darkness on these, these exterior portions and allowing for this real airiness to happen. So you can still have these little peekaboo spots of that sky behind it. And then this is, and you just bring it into a place that you feel is, um, is finished. I do want to kind of, I feel like I want to do something with these guys up and through here. So I'm washing my brush and picking up a little bit more of that um, red and ultramarine blue. Just to give myself just a little, with a little bit of water, just a little airiness, a little bit extra airiness in these guys. There we go. So that right there just gave me these really fluffy, just dissipated type of clouds. And I do want some brighter areas too, so I can go white plus red and yellow, and that'll give me almost like a bright peachy hue to 
um, the edges of these clouds. Hold on, just get a little bit more red there. So if you want some bright kind of pops of pinkish type of tones, you can just add those edges because you've got the ability to do that, especially in a sun sunset type of um, sky. You can have pink clouds, you can have purple clouds, you can have all different kinds of pretty clouds like that. So I think that that's looking pretty good. And of course, just light, airy, fluffy. There, I like that. Okay, so, and again, you can soften as much as you want. Just gonna put a little bit more softness on this one. There we go. So I've got my darkness, but I still have my softness. <laughs> that makes me happy. So I'm, I'm digging this one. I don't think I want to necessarily do anything more to that one. I've got all of my colors steering from my sunset. So when I go to this one over here, I think I'm going to use this same brush and I'm going to use, I'm going to premix a tan. So I'm going to just go white with a tiny bit of brown. Um, you could go, actually, I'm going to go white with a tiny bit of brown. Yeah, that's all. That's where I'm going. I was going to say maybe a little bit of, I'm just doing white with a tiny bit of brown. <laughs> this is going to, this is going to start my really bright areas. So again, I just want it to feel like the sunshine is really popping and making um, some certain areas of these really bright. Um, and again, I'm using a swirling type of brush stroke, but I don't need the whole thing to be super white. So I'm starting with this tan on this particular layer, which is lighter than what I've done on the previous layers. And then I will pop on one final little um, blast of white to get them to be the brightest that they that I want them to be. And I'm not doing a solid color. I'm just kind of uh, dabbing my brush along the way so it allows for some some little dark spots to still happen. I like this in through here but I feel like I want to just kind of um, lighten up just a little bit of it like that and then up in this guy up and through here I'm gonna do that and then once I've got that um, tan on there now I can wash my brush and pop on my white so this this would be the end all be all for it and if you wanted to um, make it even lighter you could certainly do that but I just popped on some white and here's where I would say okay I want I just want these little edges on that one maybe this one gets it right in through here and this is where you're going to get that really awesome dimensional element if you can control where you put that white. If you just start putting it everywhere, it's going to look like you have a big like cotton ball type of um, type of cloud as opposed to one that's got these dimensional pockets in it and these um, these this airiness to it and this fluffiness to it. So just allowing for um, yourself to kind of control those those bright spots. So I'm just kind of putting them more towards the top. You can get them to go really heavy. You can get them to go really um, thin. Maybe down at the bottom, you don't put as many white, white spots because that's going to be closer to the atmosphere. They'll be more or towards the earth. They'll be more or it's farther away from the viewer, uh, visually closer to the earth. Um, and since it's farther away from the viewer, you might not be able to see all of the tones in it. You could also put little bits of um, blue inside these clouds too. If you wanted to go that route, you could pick up any of your shades of blue that will resemble maybe what's in your sky and you can pop them in too. So that's an alternative if you want to add more colors to that. So I'm thinking those look pretty good. I'm gonna move on to my my night clouds. And this, I'm, I'm digging the way that the night clouds look right now. I just need, I think I just need to amp up a little bit of those highlights. Um, so I'm gonna pick up the cobalt blue, dark blue, white mixture that I had and add a tiny bit more white to it. Again, I'm still just using this large blender. It seems to be working pretty well for me. So that's where I'm sticking. So I can, this is now gonna be popping these really bright highlights over predominantly on the side that's closest to the moon. So I'm concentrating them more over there than I'm going to be down here. And I can certainly add more information to these guys down here 
but the brightest of the bright goes towards that light source. So especially in a night sky like this. So if I wanted more blue stuff, I could pick up my, my cobalt blue, my dark blue, and less white, and I can increase any information on these guys that I feel would benefit the viewer to understand. So maybe I put a little bit extra stuff in, in these guys, maybe I don't, whatever, again, your feeling would benefit, you know, you as, or the viewer. And if you, you could even put more ultramarine blue or again, whatever works for you. So I'm thinking that that's three pretty good representational ways to make some clouds. <laughs> so I hope you learned a couple of tips from this. Um, just remember to always play, enjoy the process and, and just explore different techniques. And I, as always, look forward to painting with you.